Recently, Fed Chair made it very clear that he wouldn't stop tightening until he's convinced of achieving the 2% inflation target in US. On the back of this, Indian rupee has been weakening continuously against the US dollar. Yesterday, rupee declined about 1.1% and today it hit new lows, crossing 81 mark again against US dollar for the first time ever. Now, this was on the back of US dollar strengthening with the dollar index rising to a fresh 20-year high of 111. Let's discuss this. Interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve in response to decade-high inflation have sent bond yields soaring, making the dollar more appealing to investors. Now, when the dollar value rises, so does the value of all underlying assets, including US government bonds, treasury bonds, and so on. This makes it more lucrative for investors to keep their money in US markets than in emerging markets. As money leaves India, demand for dollar increases and demand for rupee declines, which causes the rupee to weaken. The RBI had previously been selling dollars to stop the rupees fall beyond the 80 mark. Now, this can be seen in the decline in our foreign exchange reserves. However, it is currently on a wait and watch mode as it did not interfere in Thursday's trade. The rupee is depreciating, but this is not just an Indian issue. The whole world is currently reeling under this pressure. Yesterday, the rupee was the worst hit among all its Asian peers. However, when you compare on a month-over-month -month basis, the Indian rupee held up pretty well compared with Thai baht, Philippines peso, Taiwan dollar, South Korean won and Singapore dollar. Now, while we say this, the key impact of the Fed's much more aggressive monetary tightening will be a further strengthening of the US dollar. This will further put pressure on the Indian rupee and also its peers. After SEBI recently asked private equity and venture capital funds focusing on private market investments to disclose detail regarding their valuation practices, the regulator is now likely to mandate more disclosures with regard to pricing of the IPO in its upcoming board meeting on September 30. Now, let's discuss this. The Indian primary market has remained subdued on the back of bearish sentiment globally, which is affecting primary markets worldwide. Now, the graph on your screen displays the BSE IPO index's poor performance as compared to the BSE Sensex index. Now, SEBI has faced criticism after the meltdown in shares of new age companies such as Zomato, Paytm and Policy Bazaar. Now, this has compelled the regulator to partly address the issue and is likely to mandate companies to provide a rel relatively detailed explanation of how they price their IPOs, compare pricing to pre-IPO share sales and also disclose all the presentations made to pre-IPO investors. Now, while we don't expect the complete interference of SEBI in IPO pricing, but with more disclosures and transparency, this is likely to benefit investors to make more informed decisions. When chip scarcity caused by supply chain disruption severely impacted manufacturers of everything from phones to cars, governments around the world sought to lessen their reliance on imports and build their own semiconductor manufacturing units. Now, the Indian government recently tweaked the rupees 76,000 crore PLI scheme for semiconductors, offering to give 50% of the project cost across all categories. Now, the PLI scheme, which was unveiled in December last year, provided financial support ranging from 30 to 50 percent to several categories for the development of semiconductors in the country. Now, with the government now contributing 50 percent of the project cost across all technology nodes, this has been made more consistent. 
The tweaks in the PLI scheme were applauded by industry veterans and is expected to attract players across the entire semiconductor ecosystem. With India striving to be a top economic nation, it needs minimum, at least minimum semiconductor capabilities domestically. Now, while the journey, of course, won't be easy because of the complexity of semiconductor production, the scale of investment made by the government is a positive. An Indian semiconductor sector, if it is successful, has the potential to be very profitable for the nation, providing for the exponentially growing domestic demand as well as the needs of the global market. So what does this news mean for you? The macroeconomic environment at the moment makes the rupee outlook uncertain, which puts further pressure on trade and current account deficit. This will have a direct negative and indirect negative impact on you. If SEBI mandates more disclosures and strives for further transparency around IPO pricing, it will benefit investors to make informed decisions. This will have an indirect positive impact on you. The incentives offered to all chip manufacturers could make India a more attractive destination. This will have an indirect and positive impact on you. While I say this, this is me, Merlin Susanna, signing off. Take care and stay invested. Did you like watching this video? Then download our app, Informed Investor, to watch more such informative and interesting videos.